And I remember talking to our whole executive team and everyone's like, gee, you know, revenue's gonna cut in half, this is scary. And our revenue didn't cut in half. Wow. In fact, quite the opposite, all of our brands are growing. And I had everybody yeah. close their eyes yeah. and I said, let me read to you the vision of what the future looks like. We're celebrating in Hawaii in 2016. We are hearing laughing and clinking of glasses and we feel so proud that we've more than doubled our business. And Following I know you don't, you don't work on weekends, right? <laughs> Today is a fantastic day. I have a good friend of mine here visiting the studio, Brian Scudamore. Now, if you watch my show, actually last time I was in Brian's office, and yeah. this time he's coming to our office, our studio. This is like after the, the COVID-19, and he's the franchise king. Everybody knows uh -huh. that, right? Uh, a lot nice. of different brands that he's built. Most well known, of course, 100 Got Junk, right? So I thought, you know, since Brian's is coming, why don't we put the mic on and actually talk some war stories, especially yeah. like how CEOs navigate through uh, this period of time. Now, Brian, we were just, before we start, we're talking mm -hmm. about the entire group that you have now, this year is gonna hit close to $500 million in Canadian dollars. In Canadian, In Canadian dollars, yeah. right? Yeah, like, it's so huge, like, it's a huge So like 100,000 US. 100,000 US, yeah, 150,000 US yeah. <laughs> with the exchange rate. So um, talk to us, since like COVID-19, uh, I think a lot of entrepreneurs also look up to you, they reach out for advice, right? Mm. Uh, what do you see, what, how has that impact your business and how has that impact like entrepreneurs that you know yeah. in terms of COVID? So when March 12th, I think it was yeah. hit and the yeah. world just started falling apart quickly, we were talking on Zoom with people in our office because we shut down our office. Yeah. And I remember talking to our whole executive team and everyone's like, gee, you know, revenue's gonna cut in half. This is scary. Mm. We're not gonna be able to get out there with our trucks. Mm. And we were worried that our brands, our three brands were in trouble. Mm. However, we were lucky because we were an essential service with 1-800-GOD-JUNK. Yes. Our other brands, Wow One Day Painting and Shack Shine, yes. people didn't want anyone in the homes. Yes. But once people got through understanding that this isn't forever and yes. understanding there are measures, distancing and masks yes. to be safe, yes. we started to equip our teams with the right tools out in the field to mm. do the jobs safely. Yes. And our revenue didn't cut in half. Wow. In fact, quite the opposite. All of our brands are growing. Yes. 1-800-GOT-JUNK is up well over 20%. Wow. And what happened is people started spending more, as we all know, yes. more time at home. Yes. They want to get rid of junk because they've got to turn that office into, yes. or, or that all bedroom that, yeah, into, all an the office, into an office. basement into an office, all the garage into an office, right? Yeah. Exactly. Yes. And then Wow One Day Painting and Shack Shine, what was interesting there is people aren't traveling, they're not going out to eat as much, yes. they're not spending money on things outside the home, they're spending money inside the home. Correct. And our value prop, especially for Wow One Day, went way up. Nobody wants people in their houses. Yes. But if you're going to tell me you're going to come in and paint my entire house on the inside yes. in a day, yes. and you're going to be in and out, yes. the value prop went way up. Yes. And our business is soaring. Yes. Uh, it's been so, while it's been a challenging time with COVID, yes. I'm grateful we're in the industries we're in. Correct. Correct. And they're all growing like yes. crazy. Versus like other, let's say, retail type franchises, they are the ones that are suffering big time because capacity issue or they just get shut down and things like that. And people go, mm. let's say if a, a restaurant franchise, mm. it's a lot more challenging, right? So everything, I'm just curious, when you picked the industry for home service, mm -hmm. was it strategic or was it uh, just like, oh, like why you picked those type of industries? Well, I think it, I've always been a big believer, grow where you're planted. If yes. something's working, yes. continue to do that. Yes. So 22 years of 1-800-GOT-JUNK, yes. Yes. which I discovered the business, being in a McDonald's drive through yes. I see up a beetle-pulled pickup truck, yes. I buy the truck, I start hauling junk as a way to pay for college. We now have thousands of trucks out on the road. Mm. But 1-800-GOT-JUNK was working so well, franchising a service or a chore that people didn't really want to mm. do. Mm and us giving a, a platform or a recipe to franchise owners mm. to come in and build a business with yes. us, it worked, so why not go into another similar service, and oh, that's where it. I discovered Wow One Day Painting. Kind of the same audience, the same household, but now different types of services. Yeah, what can we do them. at home? It's like your business, to what else value. can you do online? Yeah. Yes. So for us, our, our scalability became 
let's go into the home and paint the home mm. with wow one day painting let's go in with shock shine and wash windows gutters yes uh, power wash yes and we called that business house detailing uh, someone yes. details their car yes. why not detail your house yes. And, uh, and it's been fun. So while home services might not be attractive to many people when yes. they go, oh, I don't know if I want to start a painting business. Yes. We're not looking for painters. We're looking for business, business people own. that yes. want to build an empire in yes. their own city. Yes. And uh, it's been really fun. It's interesting because a lot of people, they might think of, oh, like, like, that's, like that's not sexy. It doesn't feel sexy. Yeah. But that's actually very sexy from yeah. a business perspective. Sure. Because it's, like, it's, it's nice and steady. If in some cases, repeat services, right? Mm -hmm. It's high profit margin. Uh, like, and just by think about the competitions, mm -hmm. I think I texted you a few months ago about, oh, I saw this uh, uh, kind of 1 uh, 800 got junk. Competitor. Look alike. Yeah. yeah, look alike. Oh, are they copying you? And then you're no, you're like, then I know them. They're like they're good people. Like yeah. which which is very nice of Brian. Like it's not like, oh yeah, he's a competitor. No, it's like, no, those those are good guys. They're all doing good work, right? Yeah. Uh, it's those type of things. Who who would have known? One eight hundred got junk, like a junk business, you would build it to, to this empire, right? People would think about maybe online, maybe something like that. That's yeah. like more sexy. Sure. But sometimes the sexy thing is not sexy at all. Right? Yeah, and define sexy. I mean, you know, we're over 400 million in revenue with yes. just 1-800-GOT-JUNK alone. Yes. That's pretty that sexy to pretty some sexy. people. Yes. But the fact that it's such a fragmented mom and pop space, junk yes. removal, house detailing, yes. house painting. Some guy with a truck, you know, right? How we've reinvented that category yeah. through customer experience. Our parent yes. company is called O2E Brands, That's which right. stands for ordinary to exceptional. Yes. We're taking ordinary spaces yes. and making them Extraordinary brands. Ex exceptional through customer experience. That has a sexiness. Yes. We take care of our people, the people yes. take care of the clients, yes. the clients take care of the growth of yes. a business. Yes. And why not do something that others don't want to do? Mm. And that's become, uh, that's become sexy. I remember you shared a story with me before, during this time of like 22 years now. Yeah. What are some of the, the, the big, I think in, as, as an entrepreneur, I've experienced this multiple times. I'm sure you have as well. I mm -hmm. call that like we're screwed or we up yeah. moment, right? Sure. Like there's certain times where, oh my God, you think we are not going to get over this. Mm -hmm. This is going to be the end of the company. Mm -hmm. Like I've had that quite a few times. Like share with us some of those moments. Like you felt like, oh my God, this is, I don't know how to get through this. Like mm -hmm. those type of stories. Yeah, so I'll share a couple. Uh, one was five years into the business when I fired my entire company. Yes. I had 11 employees, yes. one bad apple spoils the whole bunch, and I think I probably had nine bad apples. Oh, wow. I fired them all. Is it bad culture or they like, what, 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 they, was, what were the issues? They weren't the right cultural fit. They weren't the happy, smiley, optimistic people yes. I like to be with. Yes. One thing I learned from you is to hire happy people. Hire happy people. Yeah. I learned that that day when I fired all 11 mm. unhappy people. <laughs> I said, we're going to now bring people in who are happy. Yes. And, you know, I think in every dark moment yes. and in the middle of a pandemic, it's been dark for a lot of people yes. and, and tragedies aside, I think there's gifts in a pandemic. Yes. There, if you're able to see the opportunities, which I've been able to see, yes. you know, the opportunity I, I was telling you up in your office when yeah. you gave me a tour yeah. is there are more people out there right now who are losing jobs or who are deciding to quit, wanting to start a business, getting packaged out, mm -hmm. and they're taking that money and they're saying, I've always had the dream to run my own business. Yes. Like 9-11, when it made people think about their lives and their yes. future, yes. COVID has had people go, wow, I'm gonna make some life changes. I'm gonna do what matters most, and that's I've Correct. always wanted to run a business. Yes. Maybe I haven't had an idea. Yes. Maybe franchising is that idea, and we Correct. give people the business model and the recipe to and build the something. System. Exactly. Right. And when we have when you had to lay off that team in the, f the first five years, mm -hmm. what was going through your mind? Like, were you thinking, oh my, like, oh, maybe I, this, I, I can't do this? Like, what are some of those, mm -hmm. like, alone times, right? Because entrepreneurs, we don't talk a lot about it. We see the, 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 the glam, right? We build sure. this company, we do this, and we do this. We have PR and TV and interview. Mm -hmm. But those alone time where mm -hmm. pff, I don't know if I could get through this. Like, what, were you, what was going through your mm -hmm. mind back then? Yeah, it was a depressing time. Yeah. And as an entrepreneur, I've learned to face my, sort of identify my weaknesses and even not be afraid to talk about them. Why not yeah. be vulnerable? Yes. So yes, I've had my moments of depression or my days or weeks of yes. some, some sadness. And I think being alone, as you said, when I got rid of 11 people, I was completely alone. Yeah. 
I did it again at a much bigger size. I had an ex president from Starbucks yes. who came in to help me build my Supposed business. Supposed to be your integrator kind of yeah. thing, right? Yeah. And after 14 months, we parted ways because it, it just wasn't working. Now, me getting someone out of my business who my entire company thought was amazing, yeah. but I knew it wasn't the right what, fit what, and I had was, to make a change. What was not working? The vision that I saw and the vision this person saw day by day by day grew further apart. Okay. We got along. Yeah, we talked well together, but yes. we weren't going in the same direction. And was it because he was too corporate? I think this person was very corporate. Came yes. from a team of thirty thousand people with Starbucks yes. that, that yes. they oversaw. Um, but I think it wasn't believing in me as an entrepreneur. Uh, as an entrepreneur, we're a little quirky. Yes. we think differently. Yeah. We we just make decisions in different ways. Yes, my integrator that I have today, Eric Church, who's been nine years yes. with us. Yes. You speak so highly of him. Oh, yes. I mean, I, I, I hit the jackpot. The guy's a phenomenal friend, person, and yes. developer of all the people in our business. Yes. And Eric, I noticed when I was interviewing him, and I took a lot more time this time interviewing yes. my next um, integrator, my yes. next COO and president, because yes. I got it wrong. And what I noticed in Eric, and he said no one else has ever noticed in him, he's always been the person working with an entrepreneur. Got it. He loves entrepreneurs. Got it. He loves that they think differently and they see visions and big ideas and they can be a little ADD. And Eric is detail, systematic. He's the good, he good was in the people. military. Yeah. He's the rigor, the discipline. He comes from corporate Canada. Yes. But he has systems and processes. Yes. He can run the business in a way that I could never do. Correct. You know, I, I was able to get my business from zero to a million in eight years. Yes. That's a long time. Yes. He was able to get us to a point where today we do a million in revenue a day. A day. Yeah, more than that. Even during a yeah. pandemic, yes. Yeah. So having the right partner, mm. two in the box model, yes. I'm great at some stuff, but I'm bad at a lot of th yes. things. He's awesome at a lot of when things. When Eric and came in, what, how much revenue you were doing back then? We were just shy of 100 million. Okay, so he took it to like basically four times. Yeah, so we grew above 100 million and mm. then fell a little bit during yes. the financial meltdown of 07, yes. 08, and then he got us back up and uh, way beyond. I, I have a, a, a interesting question. So from that one million to a hundred million, mm -hmm. as a CEO, what, what has changed for you? Like what are some mm -hmm. lessons you've learned? Because it's a very different thing. Yeah, right? so something unexpected. I, I don't know how, if you can relate to yes. this comment, but I was in YPO years yes. ago, which I think you're in yes. YPO. Yes. And YPO has a lot of big companies, yeah, a big lot companies. of hired guns, a yeah. lot of entrepreneurs. Presidents, yeah. And I started interviewing these people and yeah. I said, Everyone that's built a billion dollar business, I want to know from you, yeah. does it get a lot harder the bigger the company gets? Yes. Without exception, everybody said no. A billion is easier than a hundred million. A yeah. hundred million is easier than 10 million, yeah. and 10 million is easier than a million. Yeah. So I'm like, what? I mean, I've been through the hard part. Yeah, yes. A million was the hardest, and now it's only getting easier. Yes. And I understood. Was that shocking? Was it, it was almost shocking. counterintuitive? Like, like really, right? Counterintuitive, shocking. Uh, I don't know if I could wrap my head around it, yes. but as I started to go to 100 million and beyond, bringing Eric on, yeah. it has gotten easier. Interesting. I mean, it, it's my, my job, you know, I, I, with no disrespect, yeah. is actually pretty easy. Yes. Um, we go through challenges, but it's easy because I have fun. It's easy because I have the right people that I'm surrounded yes, with. Yes. And it's easy because we have entrepreneurs who join us and get a franchise yes. and are so excited to learn from the learning we've all had together. Got it. But it gets easier. So it gets easier, I think, because you get better systems, you can hide processes, better, better people, right? and you get more people on your team. Mm. You know, I can take eight weeks vacation in a year where yes. I don't check my phone. And I know and no you, don't, you don't work on weekends. Right? I don't, bit. I don't work on weekends. I, I'd say the only reason I hesitated is during COVID, during yes, the pandemic, yes, there was a little more having yes, to be flexible because yes, of things with the kids and yes, adjusting to this new normal. Yes. Uh, but no, generally speaking, I do not work weekends. And, I turn and, my, and, this last weekend, I turned my email off. I do wow. not want emails. I do not want to check in. Yes. I've got a great team and I want to focus on my family. Yes, I know you like to work before COVID, work on a coffee shop. Yeah. You, you don't, you don't, how often do you go to the office? How many times a week? So my typical, let's talk pre-COVID, right? Yeah. Uh, I would be Mondays, Mondays, all coffee shops. Okay. Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, out of the office, busy, busy, back to back. Okay. And then Fridays would be my free day to go skiing, go mountain biking, hang yes. with the kids, yes. take the kids to school. Yes. So it's, it's, I work hard, but I play hard. Yes. Um, during the pandemic, even during August, yes. I decided 
it's a little easier to, to be online all the time yeah. when I go dark, yeah. when I go on vacation. Yeah. And I said, I, I kind of wanted the distraction during the yes. pandemic of being online during my month off in August. Yes. But then I said, I, I owe it to my team yeah. to go dark. Yes. So I had my assistant change my passcode to all my social media, <laughs> to my email. And yeah. I just said, Boom. month of August, even though I was going to be in Whistler at our, yeah. at our getaway place, yes. it was still focused on family and yes. not not a single check-in for work. Do you find that uh, after you've accomplished certain level of success, or the company built a certain size, mm -hmm. because it's, again, it's kind of intuitive because some entrepreneurs just, oh, the, the bigger the company, the more time I need to spend in it, uh, I should be driving all the time. Mm -hmm. But that space and thinking time is actually very valuable. Mm -hmm. It's not just taking time off, it's as an executive, and I learned this, now we're getting paid to think. We're not getting paid to do. We can think without space, right? Well, what's been, what, what, what's your take? I'm all about scale. Yeah. I want to scale things. I want to grow things because it's fun. Yes. You know, some people love building buildings. Some yes. people love gardening, you, like you know, growing businesses. things. Yeah. I love building businesses. Yeah. I love building and seeing people build and develop yeah. themselves. Yeah. So for me, I, I think what it is, is I love... Uh, I love what I do. Oh, I've I'm so ADD sometimes that I lost the question. No, no, no. It's, it's no. What, question what are your again. thoughts in terms of like get, having space and thinking time, and just oh, yeah. not working in it all the time? Yeah, th thinking time and space. That's why I take my Fridays off. Yeah. Um, I did a little experiment last week. So here we are today. Uh, a U.S. election happened yesterday. Yes. We still don't know the result. It might be months. But by the but, time you watch this, we already know the results. Yeah. <laughs> but I took. Uh, last week, completely off of checking any news. Yes. We got in ha I got in the habit during COVID of sort of checking on the uh, panic. Yeah, yeah, What's yeah, going yeah, on? Yeah, Where's yeah, the yeah, world? Yeah. Are we safe? Yeah, Is it yes, crazy? Yes. So a week before the election, I decided no, not a single bit of news, yeah. nothing. I didn't mm. want people even talking to me about what was going on. Mm. I had more creativity mm. and more opportunity and ideas coming into my head that week yes. than months prior because I was disconnected from the rat race, the negativity. Yes. So you, you say, you know, what kind of space do execs need to yeah. think? You need it. You know, why I go to coffee shops on Monday yes. is I love the buzz and energy of the coffee shop, but I'm by myself and nobody knows me and I can focus on thinking and catching up and, and strategy. Mm -hmm. yes. And so we have to focus on that. I, I want to give my, my team space to think. Yes. We spend too much time just do, 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 checking yes. email. Yes. Take some time to sort of go to the top of the tallest tree in the forest mm -hmm. and go, hmm, what oh. could the future look like if I could only imagine? Yes. And Brian, I know that you, from time to time, a lot of entrepreneurs, they, they come to you, they ask, they, they look up to you, of course, they respect your expertise, what you've done. Mm. Uh, when you talk to different entrepreneurs, some of them at different stages, mm. right? One million, two million, five, ten mm. million. Uh, what advice do you usually give them? Actually, let me take a step back. Sure. What holds them back most of the time from going to that next level? Let's say they're doing one million. What's, mm -hmm. What holds them back from going to ten million, from ten million maybe to a hundred? Mm -hmm. It's the people, is it the industry, is it the business model, mm -hmm. or is it themselves? It could be yeah. that, right? Yeah. Like what's been your, your experience, just talking about my, my experience after 31 years of running and building businesses is we hold ourselves back. So if I'm talking to any entrepreneur yes. and they tell me how busy they are and yes. the, the bigger the business grows, the bigger their busyness becomes, yeah. it's because they're not scaling themselves. Okay. They need to learn, I had to learn this, letting go of things and knowing yes. there's people in your company that can do things better yes. than you if yes. only you allow them to, to go out and do that. Yes. Uh, a friend of mine and mentor, Jack Daly, the professional sales yes. coach, Jack said to me yeah. once, he said, if you don't have an assistant, this is years before I had one, he goes, if you don't have an assistant, you are Parkinson, one. Yes. Because what he means is I'm doing my own assistant work. Yeah. If I can hire someone for a, a lower hourly amount than I would pay myself, yes. why not delegate some of that? Why not delegate to a professional yes. who's great at helping to organize the calendar and appointments and so on? Yes. And so what do entrepreneurs, what can they do to get things off their own plate yes. so that others can help them scale? The other thing that I think people do to hold themselves back yes. is they don't allow themselves to dream. They mm. don't allow themselves to think of those big possibilities mm. in, their, in their head. Yes. I spoke with an entrepreneur on the drive down here today, and she said one of her goals is to meet the woman who founded Spanx. Mm. Massive company. Yes. Wants to meet this other female entrepreneur yes. who's been really successful. Yes. And I said, 
will you meet her? She goes, of course I will. I said, is it in writing? She said, yes, it is. And I said, you'll meet her. You'll figure out a yeah. way to meet her. Yeah. If you believe and you dream in these big, hairy, audacious goals, and you start telling the world, yes. telling people like myself, yes. you're gradually going to get there. So I think people limit themselves by not dreaming about the big possibilities. I wanted to be on the Oprah Winfrey show. You I did. wanted to give Oprah a big yeah. hug. Yeah. I wrote it down. I talked about it. I just put it out there to the universe. Mm. And it happened. Yes. And it was one of the biggest things for 1-800-GOT-JUNK. Yes. When Oprah is on stage and you see a 1-800-GOT-JUNK truck drive behind her on screen, and she says, 1-800-GOT-JUNK? Wow. You're just like, this is unbelievable. Yes. So dreaming big. People just limit themselves. Walt Disney said, it's mm. kind of fun to do the impossible. Yes. One of the greatest parts about my job is I get to dream impossible things yes. and give them to people who believe they can make them possible, and they do. That's very profound because you notice entrepreneurs, sometimes not only we're choking our business to death, but we put mm. these limitations. Oh, it's like, Brian, you wouldn't have the company you have today if you were thinking about, well, you know, just have a couple of trucks, you know, make mm, a living. Mm. Today would still be a couple of trucks and making a living. Yeah. But no, you see something different in your mind. You see, like, I, I'm curious, were you seeing, I see trucks everywhere with the brand mm -hmm. that people are driving mm -hmm. with. Is that what you saw first and then it kind of manifest? Yeah, I see the, the picture in the future. Yes. So when we do what's called a painted picture, yes. I lean into the future and I yes. go, what do things look like yes. five years down the road? Yes. How do we act? Yes. How many trucks? Yes. And I just start imagining. So to give you a very uh, sort of specific example, 2012, yes. Eric came on board just before that. We yes. were at about 100 million in revenue. Yes. And I called out to the team and I said, the whole company, we are going to double revenue from 100 million <laughs> to 200 million. Yes. And when we do, not if we do, yeah. when we do, yeah. five year, four years from now, yeah. we are going to celebrate in Hawaii. Yeah. So what I did is I said, I read my painted picture in a big hotel ballroom in Las Vegas where yes. we were. To get into that meeting, yes. 500 people, you had to show up with a Hawaiian shirt. Yes. You, had to, you were given a lay at the yes. doors oh, with wow. the flowers. Yeah, you yeah, were yeah, given yeah. a Mai Tai. Yeah. Hola. <laughs> and I had everybody yeah. close their eyes. Yeah. And I said, let me read to you the vision of what the future looks like. Yes. So I described, we're celebrating in Hawaii in 2016. Yeah. We uh, are drinking Mai Tais. Yeah. We are hearing laughing and clinking of glasses. Yeah. And we feel so proud that we've more than doubled our business. Yeah. And sure enough, Four years later, we celebrated in January wow. or February of 2017, yeah. brought the whole company, 800 people, to Hawaii. Wow. We were drinking Mai Tais, we were celebrating. I was rereading the painted picture on stage. I yes. looked behind me, and just like the painted picture said, yes. we're 12 feet from shore. Yes. You can hear the wind blowing through the, yes. the, the palm trees. I was there way ahead of anyone else. Yes. So my team, in Hawaii kept saying, Brian, you must be so proud. This must feel so great to actually live the dream and accomplish what you set in the painted picture. Mm -hmm. And I kept thinking in my mind, You've seen it. I was here years ago. Yes. It was almost anticlimactic yeah. to me in a weird way. I, I wanted everyone else to celebrate and yes. they had fun. Yes. And I felt like a leader helping them do this. Yes. But I had already celebrated in my mind. Yes. I saw it. And that's a part of making that dream reality. That's so powerful. I, I had very similar experience. Same thing, it feels almost like deja vu. It works like magic. It, it, it's like, oh, oh yeah, like it's, oh, aren't you, ha you have, I'm, I'm happy, I'm glad, but yeah. it, in my mind, it's already happened, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. One of the quotes that I have, I said, you always want to act as if all your dreams have come true, mm -hmm. and then you challenge the reality to catch up. Mm -hmm. right? I love that. You know, it's like, it's already happened. It's mm -hmm. not maybe, it's like when, you know, I've seen it mm -hmm. hundreds of times. Mm -hmm. When it happens, it just happens. It, 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 I think sometimes entrepreneurs, we also notice, oh, I don't have the resources, I don't have the right people, I can't meet that person, I don't, mm -hmm. like all these limitations. You'll be shocked when you have clarity and you ask, mm -hmm. just like the, the entrepreneur you were talking to, mm -hmm. if she wants to meet that person, she tells people, it's only a matter of time she'll meet someone, oh, I, I know, mm -hmm. I know mm -hmm. that person, mm -hmm. I can put you in touch. Mm -hmm. But if we are afraid to ask, we mm -hmm. don't even ask, you will, you will never get, mm -hmm. you will never get. And then you said, so from the entrepreneurs you work with, you kind of talk to them to get their next level. Besides delegation, what are some of the tactical things that you did in terms of structure or, or corporate structure, like tactical things you did go to that 100 million? Yeah, to go to 100 million, it was, it was taking a list of everything in my business yes. and saying one at a time, how do I let go of everything? Got it. So even the things I did very well, pitching the press. Yes. 
it wasn't me that pitched Oprah and got us on the show. Yes. It was a, a fellow named Tyler Wright, mm. who was our first PR hire. Got it. I let go of the PR world mm. and said, here, let me give it to someone else. Yes. I let go of running the call center and uh, gave it to someone else. Yes. I let go of everything I could yes. until I was left, really, when I brought Eric on board, mostly with vision and, yeah. and strategy and culture. Yes. I've got the easiest job in the world. Yes. I've got the best job in the world yes. for me. Yes but it's by letting go. So I think scaling is about consciously deciding what's next to let go of. Okay. Every business has a finance component. Yes. How do you get rid of payroll? Yeah. How do you get rid of doing the books? Yes. How do you get rid of being your own assistant? Yes. And so one step at a time, it's yes. starting to take off the hats that you're wearing, yes. multiple hats, and, and allowing it to grow. I mean, I've got to think in your world, yes. you know, you are the brand. Yes. You can't replace yourself in no. terms of talking on camera no. and interviewing people. Yes but all the things you had to let go of Correct. to grow the business that Correct. you've grown. Correct. Which is really also powerful. like, it's, we, have, we were geeking out about like funnel and Facebook ads just before mm -hmm. this, but it is the, it, it's a, it's a two-edged sword, two-edged sword because the personal brand is great, it's, very, it's a very powerful weapon, mm -hmm. right? But we gotta utilize it properly, so we are focusing on time building the personal brand to, well, I call it accumulating social capital, that's mm -hmm. what I, I mm -hmm. described it as, it's not getting following. Uh, while running the business, mm. but the business model itself is not actually, the, the revenue is not generated with personal effort. Mm. It's just the reach, the mass, mm -hmm. right? It's, it's because of social media where we're going right now, right? Mm. Uh, one last question. So let's say for now what's happening and a lot of people want to go into, uh, be their own boss, go into businesses, right? Mm. Where do you see you know, some of the brands that you have, where that is going? Like, what, what's your vision for the next, let's say, four years? Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, so right now, one thing I, I told you in your office that I didn't expect from a pandemic is yes. I didn't realize how many people were going to take this opportunity to yes. start their own business. Yes. We were getting people flooding yes. us with wanting to start a franchise. Yes. And it's been interesting because I've always thought People don't know where to start yes. when they start a business. Yes. That's often the blocker. You talk about limitations. Yes. People yes. go, I just don't have the next idea. Yes. I want to create a billion dollar business. I yes. want to create the next Instagram. Sometimes yes. they think so big, but yeah. it's, it's just start by creating something. Correct. And so what I'm passionate about is I believe we've created almost a business school. Yes. People who come in who've never run a business. Correct and they buy a franchise yes. and we teach them step by step by step mm. how to do everything. You follow the system, mm. you'll be successful. Mm. We have so many entrepreneurs that came in that knew nothing about business, that had mm. never run a franchise, that mm -hmm. have built millions and millions of dollars in revenue. Not thinking it years. Exactly, <laughs> thinking, faster than me. Yeah, yeah. You know, so, so Paul Guy, our first franchise partner, yeah. it took me zero to eight years to get to a million in revenue. Yeah. He did it in his first full calendar month. Wow. So I felt like, man, I suck, <laughs> right? But I created but the system the to the give way. to him and he did it faster. Yes. So I think when people are looking for a business idea, sometimes mm. they've got to recognize Maybe the idea is just, the big idea is learning from someone else. Yes. We pay, you know, $50,000 to go to university. Yes. Why not put money into starting a business and yes. learn how to run a business through yes. a franchise? Yes. And then maybe you add more franchises. Maybe you go start a business of your own. Correct. I think people need to understand that there's different types of entrepreneurs. There's some yes. like you and I who yes. like to create from scratch. Yes. And that's painful and challenging. Yes. Yes. But not rewarding. for everybody. Yeah. Let me just say, not for everybody. Yeah. And then there's some that want to start small and organic and, yes. and learn from someone else. Yes. Um, I like shortcuts as an entrepreneur, hacks, yes. we call them. Yes. Uh, I think franchising is a great hack because people can go, oh, well, I can scale something faster than Brian did in the same business Correct. because I'm using his, Correct. his system. Correct. And this is why most businesses, they have, nine, some say 90, some say 95 percentage fail in the first five mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. With versus franchises, you come in, there's a system, there's a brand. Sure. The, the think about sales, marketing, everything that you do. You're starting from scratch, nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. We just build that one piece at a time. Mm -hmm. And it takes a long time mm -hmm. because you have to account for a learning curve. Mm -hmm. Whatever you build, the sales component is not going to be that good. The marketing component probably is not going to be that good either. Bit by bit, and then you have to attract the right talent to mm -hmm. run that. So I think. Sometimes on social media, it's easy to say, oh, I'm gonna start my business, I'm gonna do this. You see someone successful, and I think most people don't know what they're getting themselves into. Mm -hmm. Like, 
<laughs> it's like looking, look at Brian, look at us, like me, like gray hair. Over the years, I mean, it's not easy. Yeah. Like it, there are a lot of sleepless nights, uh, a lot of stress, yeah. uh, a lot of problems, and they kind of don't go away. <laughs> yeah, sure. And some people, I mean, I kind of enjoy that. Yes. Right. You know, I, I it, need, it takes a certain per, it takes a certain personality. Yeah. You know, I wrote a book called WTF: yeah, Willing to Fail because. Yes. It's those failures and mistakes that, in a in a strange way, I just find so fascinating because yes. I learn from them, and they always, if I've taken the learning, yes. I've gotten to a bigger, better place as a result. Yes. Um, but I love the franchise model when you can take people who go, why not learn from all our franchise partners that have made the mistakes, yeah. so you don't have to, yeah. and and do things faster. And I also know that it's just not just your mistakes, but it's like almost like a hub intelligence, right? Totally. Where. Hey, what's working in your city? Like, oh, you're doing that. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Oh, that th that little fly that you did that that attracted referrals. You mm -hmm. just take all that and then you share the best practices with everybody else, right? Yeah, they're non our franchise partners. I was on a Wow One Day yeah. uh, regional meeting yes. with uh, the owners today uh, on Zoom, and we talked about the fact that this network of 50 plus, I think it was like 85 people on that call. Those owners yes. can ask each other direct yes. questions. Yes. They're in non-competing cities, correct? But they're in the same business, so yes. they can say this is exactly what worked. Mm. It's like you and I today, and, yeah. I, and I love how entrepreneurs share things with people. Yes. You're like, oh yeah, I've got the answers to these. I'll send you this document. Yep. I'll send you that. Yep. Why not learn from others? Yes. And why not give and help others as well? Yes. And uh, that's one of the best things about entrepreneurship. It's coming from the the uh, the abundance mindset, not a mm. scarcity. Oh, if I share my trade secrets, you know, you, I'm going to create competition. It's yeah. it's not like that. And actually, actually, most high level entrepreneurs that we know, mm. they're like, even first time when I when I when I connected with with Brian, say, like, yeah, come to my office. Mm. It's like, yeah, come see like, see my see my operation. It's yeah. very inviting. It's not like, ooh, what do you want from me? It's no, come, yeah. come check it out. Like it's yeah. awesome. And it, yeah. the same thing. Oh, come check it out. Like it's it's kind of like that. Like it's kind of it's only the small entrepreneur. They're small minded. They feel like they see everything as a threat. Yeah, they're they're trying to protect their the little, secrets. But yeah, there's no secret. There's no secret. I mean, even with you know, you mentioned that you sent a picture of yeah. a junk truck. Yeah. It was five oh five junk. Yeah. It was a guy named Barry who yeah, I he, said, yeah. Come into the office. Yes. Come check out what we're doing. Yes. He's like, But you're a competitor. I'm like, I don't care. Yeah, I there's don't no care. secrets. No. He might buy up buy a franchise as well, you know. Yeah. It's like you never know. Yeah. Like the, the world is very, very interesting. So Brian, if someone uh, is thinking about starting their own business, like mm -hmm. with during the pandemic mm -hmm. or they are looking into maybe franchise as an option. Mm -hmm. uh, if they want to find out, get in touch with your company, what's the best mm -hmm. way to do that? Yeah, so any of our brand sites, 1-800-GOT-JUNK, Wow One Day Painting, Shack Sh Sh Shine, Shine. Sh yeah. uh, they can go to O2E Brands. O2E Brands is the hub, and, yeah. yeah. So, you know, we've got, like you, there's so much social media content out yes. there, easy to find. Yes. Uh, go to one of our, of our websites yes. and, uh, and get in touch. And, yes. We just we and, love and who would be the I, ideal uh, franchisee for you? So if I look at our partners, the early day one eight hundred got junk mm. success model of yes. who the people were, and with Wow One Day and Shack Shine, our newer brands, they're all fairly similar. Similar, they're sort of late twenties, maybe early thirties. Yes. Um, hungry. Hungry. They want to be hands on to learn, but then get out of the business and watch it scale with yes. their leadership. Kind of learn the fundamentals how the business works and then run the business. Build an empire. Yeah. Uh, they're hard working. Yes. Uh, and they're happy. Just like we hire happy people, happy people, we want franchise partners that go, wow, I'm lucky. Yes. Man, this is awesome. Yeah. Wow, we're surrounded by amazing people. Yes. I mean, it's, you know, it's a pretty special place. O2E Brands, you've been into the junction, you've and, seen and our and office. And when I, when I saw the morning huddle that you guys did, mm -hmm. it just, it's crazy. Like the energy, the vibe, and mm -hmm. it's great. And you, you have other people presenting. Just the vibe from the, because I've been to other offices too, which is like, they don't have that vibe. Mm -hmm. You have a very unique vibe. Like it's well, happy, motivated And people. it's because I think as a leader, what motivates me has yes. never been money. Yes. I drive a little Toyota pickup truck. Yes. yes. It's all branded, of course, but I'm not about buying things. Yes. I'm about building people, yes. experiences, yes. and watching things grow. Yes. And so the energy behind that with all of us, it, yes. it's magical. Now, yes. I love when a franchise partner, you know, Paul in Toronto goes and buys himself an, an Audi R8. Oh, nice. Hey, Good. that's yeah, great if that's, that's what great. he wants. Yes. But what I want is, what are your dreams, yes. and how can we help make them happen? Yes. And, and I'll, I'll personally attest, like in the beginning, there's a period of time where uh, those 
let's say materialistic things mm -hmm. drove me more. Oh, I yeah. like the nice things, the nice thing, all that. It's interesting when you could get it, those things you lose interest very quickly. Yeah. Like Brian, he could, I could, you know, go out, we get a whatever car. That's not interest us. Let's no. just forget that stuff. Let's yeah. just build something. Yeah. When you could get it, it, it like I don't even wear a watch anymore. <laughs> right? I had a whole watch collection, like those things just don't interest yeah. me. Because it's like, now you know, I guess before we kind of want some validation from the world. Hey, look yeah. at what I've done, look at yeah. all. When you, when you have that already, nah, we don't need that stuff, like status simple stuff. We are more interested, okay, how can we grow this thing? Mm -hmm. How do you overcome the challenges? Mm -hmm. How are we going to navigate? Like all these things, it's that. So it changes. Mm -hmm. For you, it would change as well. In the beginning, provide for your family. You want to have a certain lifestyle. Once you get all that, I think you notice your motive would change. And I think that's why love Brian, what he does. Huge respect, I say many, many Likewise, times, right? Yeah. Huge respect, what he does. Uh, so inspiring, even when I went to the office and what he's built. I know your goal is to build up to a billion dollars. I saw that on the, on the vision board, right? Yeah. In, the, in, in the office. And the, the billion is, is, you know, again, not about the money, but not it's a the measurement money. of the size and scale of Correct. the people that we are impacting Correct. through our influence Franchise of helping to build. Franchisee and the customers yeah. and yeah. all of that. And then you've got, you know, Eric Church, our, our president and COO, he's already talking about two billion, right? <laughs> so in leaders trying to think so far ahead, yes. he already knows a billion's going to happen. Wow. We're halfway there, but he knows it'll happen. Yes. He's already talking about two billion. So it, it's fine. That's amazing. We love what we do. That's amazing. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. Hey, here. thanks, Dan. Appreciate it.